Hello friends. So now we have a new lesson. The Ballad of Father Gilligan. Ballad. Ballad means a poem that tells a story. Now this is the story of Father Gilligan. His full name is Father Peter Gilligan. Reverend Father Peter Gilligan. Now the poem, the ballad, uh, is written by William Butler Eats. Pronunciation is Eats, not Eats. <laughs> William Butler Eats. Uh, about the author, you know, I have written here, he is from Ireland and therefore he is an Irish poet. That's the important point to note. An Irish poet, we say Indian, no? like that. India, Indian. Ireland, Irish. So, Irish poet. Second point is that he's one of the most famous and also a major or important poets of the 20th century. Among the 20th century poets, he has got a, a great name, great fame and a great position. Yes, 1923, he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature for inspired poetry, inspiration, <coughs> to give inspiration to others. For example, when you read the story of Good Samaritan, you get inspiration. That means you are influenced. You also want to become another Good Samaritan, like that. So the, the message or the main focus of his poems or the important points in his poems, they will inspire you. Means you also, you will be influenced by the ideas. For example, in this poem, ballad, in this ballad you will find, there is faith in God. He is stressing this point, faith in God, mercy of God, then providence of God, and also how God cares for you. So these things will inspire you. And selfless service of Father Peter Gilead. Dedication, devotion to duty. So these things will inspire you when you read this poem. So for inspired poetry, writing inspired poetry, he was awarded Nobel Prize in 1923. Nobel Prize in Literature. Listen. And now his greatest works he wrote after he was awarded Nobel Prize. The Tower is one. The Tower. And then next one is the winding stair and other poems. These were his these are his great works. And that he wrote after he was awarded Nobel Prize in Literature. So Irish poet and inspired poetry hero. Inspired poetry that means I already told you influence. If you read his poems, you'll be influenced. The best example is this one, the ballad of Father Peter Gilligan. Now the ballad of the Father Peter Gilligan, of, uh, the ballad of Father Gilligan, tells you the story of an old priest who was doing selfless service to his parishioners. Parishioners means members of the parish. Parish is a church, there is a church and uh, uh, the people residing around that place, nearby the church, they are called the parishioners of the church or they are the members of that church. Now in this parish, parish is in the countryside, a village, and in this parish there we find an old priest, he's very tired because he has to do a lot of work. Day and night he was working. Why? Because 
His parishioners were poor, his parishioners were sick or dying. So it was a sick parish. <laughs> well, almost all of them were sick and some of them were dying. So you know, when the parishioners are sick, the parish priest, here the parish priest is Father Gilligan. He, by his duty bound, this is duty, to visit these sick people. And if dying, it is his duty to go and give the last blessings to the dying people. Therefore, what happened? Either sick or dying. So 24 hours he is on duty. He would be visiting the sick people and also he had to go to dying people to give his last blessings. That is his duty. Visiting the sick people also duty. Therefore, what happened? He was and old. He was very old also. He was very tired. One day he went out as usual, visited many sick people. To the dying, he gave the last blessing and just returned. He just came back to his house. Our parish, the house where the priest stays is called parsonage. Parsonage, that is the place where the priest resides. So he just returned to his parsonage. Then somebody came. Came and, and, uh, and requested him, Father, please come. Then such and such person is dying. Then his first reaction is, he was doing selfless service. His first reaction was, Oh my God, I am tired, I have no rest, nothing, no joy, nothing in my life. Suddenly he realized, oh, I, I should not have said like this because it is my duty. So he knelt down, knelt down. Knelt down means he was standing on your knees, that is kneeling. Knelt down, he knelt down and prayed, Oh God, for, please forgive me. I have, just for one moment I forgot my duty. After my body is weak, my spirit is willing to do the work. And then he slept. <laughs> he could not move. Poor father, he slept. And he slept. And throughout night he slept. The meanwhile, what happened here? You know, that is the point here. <laughs> that is, while he was sleeping, God saw this. Poor priest, let him sleep. So what did God do? He sent one of his angels to the dying man's house. The angel went to the dying man's house. In the, in the, he appeared like Father Gilligan. The angel appeared like Father Gilligan. So the Dying man's wife thought, oh, Father Gilligan has come. So he gave the last blessings. And after one hour of his leaving, the angel in the form of uh, Father Gilligan, he left and this man died very happily. He, he died very happily because why? Because the last, the dying man got his last blessing. As merry as a bird, he said. The text did he said. So he died. Then what happened is that all this while Father Gillian was sleeping. He first he complained, then he asked, pardoned God, then he slept. While he was sleeping, these things happened. Morning, he heard the sparrows chipping. They are making sound, morning birds. You have seen now, in the morning, when at daybreak, birds will make some sounds, singing and all that. Immediately he got up. And then he thought, oh my God, I failed in my duty. That man must have died. 
Whatever boast he had, he did not even wait for washing his face, but he ran to his horse. And then the horse was sleeping, the horse also was tired. <laughs> and he woke him up. And he got on his horseback and galloped as fast as he could. Never before in his life he had galloped like this or rode a horse like this. And it was a rough and tough village where they had rocky roads and fens. Fens, F E N, fen. Fen means marshy, wet, wet land. Difficult terrain. The uh, roads were very tough to ride on. So what happened is that he, he rushed as fast as he could. He reached the sick man's house. I mean, the dying man's house. He all are. Uh, when, just as when he reached there, the dying man's, the man is dead now. <laughs> the dead man's wife opened the door. Oh, Father, you have come again. Other thoughts. I just sleeping, and she is saying that you have come again. Oh, then he understood. God had mercy on this man. God showed His mercy on this poor, selfless but tired, selfless but tired old priest. So he knelt down and he prayed, and he thought, Oh my God. You are, you are, you, you are, you are very great, he said, he thought. You are the one who created the planets, this universe. But still, you thought of a very small person like me. The least of things is, he thanked God. He said, you, who are surrounded by planets and the wonders and miracles of this world, you had time to think of least of things in this world, that is myself. And he thanked God. He was really surprised, wonderstruck to think that a very small creature like Father give him. God takes great care. Because he understood while he was sleeping, God had sent one of his angels to do his duty. Why? Because God was pleased with the dedication, devotion, and selfless service, sincerity, and honesty of this poor old father. This is the outline of this story, this poem. Now the poem is written in 12 stanzas, even 12 stanzas. Stanza I told you earlier, stanza is in Italian word meaning room, room R W I L. <laughs> but here it means, it means a paragraph in a poem. And here you have got 12 paragraphs. The paragraph in a poem is called a stanza. And each stanza contains four lines. Therefore, a stanza that contains four lines, we say a quatrain. Quatrain. This is what I mean. Quatrain. Understand? Quatrain. So this is the this is the outline of the poem. This is the story of the poem. The other is this. The inspiration that you get is we should do selfless service. We should be devoted to our work. We should show dedication to our work. We should be sincere in doing our work. We should be honest in doing our work. That is, you are inspired. Then if you do these things, what will happen? 
If your attitude towards your work, it can be students, it can be teachers, it can be administrators, it can be anyone. If you are parents, then what will happen is, God will be there to help you. Don't think that you are least of things. I should not think that I am, a, I am one of the least of things. I am also very important in the eyes of God. Provided I am true to myself. You are true to yourself. True means sincere to yourself. So that is the inspiration that we are getting after reading this poem. So from tomorrow on which you will take this section by section and explain. Okay? Till then, bye.